self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. After the shooting scene was cleared, a bomb squad was sent to Paul's apartment for a quick search, which didn't produce any explosives at least. In all, five Aurora Police Department officers were shot and injured. All right, if you guys want to hold there, we'll push up to start clearing this area. Roger. Verifying you're covering that stairwell, correct? Yes, he is. Shots fired, shots fired. First floor where? North end. Shots fired, north end. Need your status. Now I'm going to deploy. Johnny, Tina, you just said we're on the far north end. Assembly cell number five. So far, no, no, uh, nobody's been hit so far. Flash, thank you. All right, far, far north end. Are you with another nine things going off? Yes, I'm fine. I'm with the SRT team. With SRT. That's all shooting out of mirror. That was you guys. More shots fired. Some more. That's a nine bang. That's a nine bang being deployed. Just trying to keep him pinned down in the corner. Okay, it was a nine bag. Hey, before you get positioned up top there, let me know. We'll deploy another nine. Two six is zero. Can't you question point? Nine bang. Nine bang, nine bang coming out. Get up. Status. I'm right, excellent. Was that a shot or was that just you guys throwing another bang? Give me a status up on another nine bang. Another nine bang. <laughs> We got condo? No, do not. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Contact me, we're moving forward. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. We're moving up to make contact with the offender. As my last location, we're so next to that. We're about to speak well. We got visual. Suspect is down. We have a react team, including a shield element that's uh, addressing the suspect. Stand by for the Bluetooth command suspect is down. Suspects down. You got, a, you, know, you got a medic coming up to your right, medic coming up. Traffic. Yeah. Medics come far north to the end, turn left. We are down to the far end. We're going to have two people stay with the suspect. We're going to back clear this lower warehouse area. The first response was massive, with the agencies mentioned earlier. Another 25 to 35 agencies and departments sent resources to the scene while 200 to 300 officers and personnel responded and were in the vicinity of the scene, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. The emergency personnel who arrive at these events always include a victim services unit, which provides obvious aid. Still, they also help families unify, help victims and witnesses find their belongings, and even offer EMS and police officers emotional support. At approximately 1.24 today, the Aurora Police Department received multiple calls for an active shooter at 641 Archer Avenue, a manufacturing warehouse. At 1.28, officers arrived and were fired upon immediately. Two of the initial four officers entering the building were shot. Additional officers began to arrive and were also fired upon. A total of five officers were struck by gunfire. The other officers on the scene located gunshot victims inside the building. At this time, we have confirmed that five victims are deceased. Clayton Parks was born on February 26, 1986, to parents Roger and Leslie Parks. He was 11 days past his birthday when he was killed. Clayton was born in Peoria, Illinois, although they lived in Princeville for the majority of his early years. A graduate of Northern Illinois University, Clayton completed his business degree in 2014. He had just begun working as a human resources manager for the Henry Pratt Company a few months before the shooting. Friends and family say that Clayton was personable and could strike up a conversation with just about anyone he encountered. His laugh and smile were contagious. Chicago sports were his passion, and he loved to root on the Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, and Cubs. Clayton had tons of hobbies and interests, but his number one priority was his family. He leaves behind his wife, Abby, and son, Axel, and mother. His brother, Cole, and dad, Roger, had both previously been deceased, and we imagine that they greeted him at the gates of heaven. Clay was enthusiastic. He uh, put a lot of effort into his volunteer 
and he was just one of those guys that you could just tell that whatever he did he wanted to do it well when you uh, realize that somebody that has helped you um, uh, through uh, and volunteered for you it, it is very surreal it's very um, not it's just a it was a shock we are saddened by the loss of Clay and uh, really our our thoughts and our prayers are for his family and the co-workers and his neighbors. 21-year-old Trevor Melvin Weiner was born on April 22, 1997 in Aurora, Illinois to Bonnie Rich and Tom Weiner. Raised in Sheridan, Illinois, Trevor was very involved with and active in his tight-knit community. He graduated in 2015 from Serena High School, going on to attend Illinois Valley Community College, where he played baseball and basketball. After graduating there in 2017, Trevor attended Northern Illinois University, where he was studying human resources and business when he was killed. However, as a senior, he was doing an internship for a human resources degree. Tragically, the day Trevor was murdered was his very first day on the job. Loved ones say Trevor always had time for a chat or a silly joke to tell. He loved sports, particularly baseball, but other hobbies included League of Legends, Magic, and World of Warcraft. No matter what he was doing, Trevor quickly made friends. He leaves behind his parents, brothers Brian, Brandon, and Thomas, and sister Stephanie. Although unmarried, Trevor was dating the love of his life, Winter Lane who was also from Sheridan. Undoubtedly, this charismatic young man will be deeply missed. Reality still hasn't completely hit me that, you know, it happened. It just doesn't, doesn't seem like it's real at all. He was someone who was always, like, pretty uh, right on time, not late, not early. And he was supposed to start at 8, and he got there at, like, 7.15. Like, he got there very early. He was very excited about it. He was always doing something goofy. He was always energetic and he would always bring a lot of fun to the table. Um, if we were ever doing anything, going anywhere, just eating out, eating here, like he always had, he had something funny to say. He played basketball and baseball and soccer. Um, he was just like a natural athlete. Like there's so many funny stories of him, but he would, he just was so good. You know, this is a small community and he really wanted like, he's a really big inspiration to all the younger kids. I just think he uh, just wanted to help people and make it be a lot better. Russell Byer was 47 years old when he was murdered. Born on February 21st, 1971, in Aurora, Illinois, to Theodore and Joyce Byer, Russell, too, had just celebrated a birthday before an untimely death. A family man, he had two children daughter Megan, and son Brett. Russell worked at the Henry Pratt Company as a mold operator, although he was at that fateful meeting because of his role as union shop chairman. Known as a dedicated and proud union steward, he took his duties seriously, though he was a gentle giant who was loving and fun, getting along with everyone. Friendship came easily for Russell, because he was simply a stand-up guy. His greatest joy was the close bond with his large family with whom he was extremely tight. The very definition of a family man, Russell leaves behind his loving family, a sister Dawn, brother Joshua, and Billy Bob, his loyal companion and dog. Vicente Juarez was born on May 5, 1964 in Juarez, Mexico. Although he lived in Oswego, Illinois, his father, Pablo Juarez, was deceased at the time of Vicente's death. Although his mother, Ginovina Martinez was still alive and well enough, save for the fact that children aren't meant to die before their parents. A dedicated employee, Vicente worked at the Henry Pratt Company as a forklift operator for about 15 years leading up to his tragic death. Another hard-working family man, he was married to his love, Leticia Lupercio, in Geneva, Illinois, in 1981. They were married for 38 incredible years building a family with three children, Adrian, Diana, and Christian. But Vicente wasn't just a loving husband and father. 
He was a dedicated brother to five sisters and four brothers and already had eight grandchildren, whom he loved so much. Cars were his biggest passion, and he enjoyed working on them. Vicente leaves behind a family full of love for him, and they will miss him, but we know he goes to join his brother and father in the afterlife. I left, and I called my dad, I called my dad, he wouldn't answer, I called my dad, I went to the emergency room asking them, do you guys have my dad, nope. Josh Timothy Pinkard was born on October 10, 1981, in Aurora, Illinois, but moved early in life. He graduated from Holly Pond High School in Holly Pond, Alabama, in 2000. From there, Josh went to Mississippi State University, where he graduated in 2005 with his Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Engineering. After graduation, Josh worked as heat craft in Grenada, Mississippi, until he accepted another job at Mueller Water Products in Albertville, Alabama. A constant seeker of knowledge, Josh continued his education and obtained a master's degree in operations management from the University of Arkansas in 2018. That same year, Josh accepted another new job as plant manager at the Henry Pratt Company in Aurora, Illinois. Josh was only 37 years old when he died, yet he touched so many lives that he came into contact with. He was married to Tara, his amazing wife, for 13 years, and together they had three children, Emily, Ian, and Sawyer. Both must have been complete superheroes having three children, all under the age of 10. After he was shot, Josh knew what was coming, so he texted his wife at 1.24 p.m. saying, I love you. I've been shot at work. After reading her husband's message in an apparent panic, Tara tried to call the plant's main line. A woman answered, saying that there was a shooting and police were swarming the area. The terrified woman that answered the call was barricaded inside an office. Desperately frightened herself, Tara continuously tried to call, text, and FaceTime Josh, but he never responded. Undeterred, she packed up her three kids and tried driving to the plant, but the roads were all blocked off just before she could enter the facility. Because she couldn't even gain entry to the building's parking lot, she drove to two different hospitals, frantically trying to locate her husband. At the second hospital, where she finally found Josh's family and co-workers had arrived, she sat and waited for the terrible news that was forthcoming. She was put into touch with someone from the Aurora Police Department, who directed Tara to the newly established Reunification Center. It was there that Tara heard the unimaginable news that her husband's name was on the list of fatalities. From there, Tara had the heavy task of sharing with her children that their dad was gone. In heaven. Josh leaves behind an extensive family, including a twin sister named Gidget, and numerous nephews and nieces. The Henry Pratt Company is located at 401 South Highland Avenue in Aurora, Illinois, which was incorporated on November 1, 1901. The company began as the Henry Pratt Boiler and Machine Company, which was a metal fabricating shop. The company started the valve industry in 1926, where the first Pratt rubber-seated butterfly valve was designed and developed. The headquarters are located in Aurora, yet there are other manufacturing facilities in Woodland, Washington, and Hammond, Indiana. The company is a subsidiary of Mueller Corporation, LLC. Because of the significant investment in research and development, the Henry Pratt Company invented various valves that went on to become industry firsts. Aurora, Illinois covers 46 square miles, but extends into four different counties, DuPage, Kane, Kendall, and Will counties. The city is an outer suburb due east of Chicago and the second most populous city in the state, with an estimated population of 198,000 in 2019. In 1881, Aurora was one of the first cities in the United States to have an entire streetlight system, all electric. In 1908, the town was dubbed, quote, the City of Lights. The downtown area can be spread out along the Fox River, and the Hollywood Casino Aurora is located in the river's downtown area. 
The casino is a 53,000 square foot gaming facility that has 1,200 gaming positions. The weather.